Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country, and today's tutorial is going to be for the pattern The Ivy Walla, and this is by the designer Stitches by Christy. I recently found her, and I did a video on one of her patterns just a while back. I will be doing a lot of her patterns. One, because I like her patterns. I feel like they're wrote just very simply. They're very easy to follow, common sense patterns. I love the designs. I think they're unique and creative. Also, I like how she runs her business and I like who she is as a person. If you're in her Facebook group, you saw the announcement she made that she is actually coming out with a 10 pack of patterns and this is going to be used to help a charity that's close to heart. She's going to be donating 50% of all proceeds to that event. I'm going to help her by making tutorials and even donating the proceeds from some of those videos. So we're going to kind of work together to help please go read about the charity that she's working with in her Facebook group. It's a wonderful story and, and I'm just honored to be a part of it and to help her out. So this is for one of her patterns that she released a while back. I was able to test it, loved it. I bought the templates from Sweetly Unique. I'm falling in love with using templates. They are so easy. They help me to be able to create more and to enjoy creating more. Whenever you get these templates, you'll want to take off that paper backing just so you can be able to use them to see clearly the design that you're cutting out. So I will be doing that. She gives you a little razor to cut or you can just, I've heard some people soak them in water, some people just pick it with their fingernail, whatever they want to do. But here is the first set of templates. And then we also have this long one for the credit card slots. I'm not going to go through all the pattern piece names just yet. What I'm going to do is just kind of pull them out a little bit, show you how they look, and then I will go to cutting everything out. For this pattern, I'm using a cotton canvas. This is from Jane R. Edwards. I'll probably try to dig through my stash to find a contrast, something that kind of can offset this print nicely so that the wallet's not all just one color. Sometimes I keep things all one color, but I think I have a couple of designs that'll match this well. Since this is a canvas, it's going to save me a little bit of time because it's not a cotton woven that I have to interface every piece. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to cut everything out. I used my templates to cut out all the pieces. And so let's go ahead and go over them. We are going to go over these in the batches. So the first thing we want to talk about is what's going to make up the credit card slots. I'm going to have two accent pieces for my credit card slots. This is going to go on the sides. I'm just using a cotton canvas, no interfacing at all on these. I'm going to have two of these extremely long pieces for the credit card slots themselves. I have not made my markings on them. I will do those off camera in just a little bit. The templates actually have the markings on them, so I'll just transfer them over here. For the credit card slot pieces, this is a cotton woven, no interfacing at all on that. You definitely don't want to use anything too thick, especially if you sew on a domestic machine, because if you do, it'll be really hard since we're going to be doing so many folds. So I definitely recommend a cotton woven, no interfacing for this piece. For the credit card slot backs, we are going to be using these pieces. I did have to piece mine together because I didn't have any long enough and I wanted to use this print. This is a cotton canvas, no interfacing on this. This will be on the other side of the credit card slots. So that's why I wanted to make these two pieces the same. So it'll be kind of like that trim will be on both sides of the credit card slots. So those are the pieces you'll need to make your credit card slots. Next, we are going to have that lining piece where the credit card slots will be. So this is going to be a cotton canvas. Again, no interfacing. I'm choosing not to interface any piece in this because at the end, I will be able to add interfacing if I don't think it feels firm enough or if I don't like the fill of it, I can slip in the interfacing at the end. So that's what I'm going to do. Those are the pieces we need for the interior. Let's start talking about the exterior. I'm going to be making a zipper pocket, so I do have my zipper tape. The pattern calls for a number three zipper. I do not use number three zippers typically. I used a number five on my last one, it did okay. If you are like me and use a number five, you will have to do trimming at the end, so just be aware of that. I'm still going to use a number five though, and I already have the pull attached. I cut the zipper according to the pattern measurements. 
For the lining, I'm using two pieces of a cotton woven, no interfacing. I do recommend that to save on some bulk as well. And I'll have two zipper tabs. Note that if you are using a number five like me, you will have to change the measurements of the zipper tabs just because it is written for a number three zipper. Let's talk a little bit about the exterior, the way it's gonna go. This zipper will be right here in the middle. This piece is gonna be the top. This is going to be a cotton canvas again, and if you're Prince Directional, this will be the part when you first see the wallet because the snap is gonna come down here. So I definitely want this part to be cut with the curve at the top. This is your contrast piece. This piece could be a vinyl if you wanted a little bit of a vinyl accent. I'm choosing to do this all in a cotton material. I'm not using any vinyl at all. So this is the way mine will look. I'm going to have this middle piece here. Again, directional print. This part is still going down, so I still want this to be the top. Make note of that. Zipper would go there, but this bottom piece, I needed the curve to actually end up being the top because when this is folded close, the snap will be here and it will go over. So if you're carrying your wallet, this would be top. This would be upside down. My, pr my print is not a big deal with direction. You can see it doesn't look horribly bad either way. But for me, this is going to be the top. So I want to make for sure I did have the print going the way I wanted. If you're using non-directional, don't worry about it. But for this one, this piece, this is your top. This is your top. Keep note of that. The last thing we have is our snap tab. I do not know where mine is right now. Let me go and find it real quick. Here it is. I found it. I had left it with the heat press, but what I'm using for my flap is a cotton canvas. This is different than what the pattern calls. So you can see what I did was I traced the original pattern piece onto this piece of fabric. Because the thing is, is this is typically designed to be a raw edge flap. I wanted mine to be cotton canvas, so I added the seam allowance into this pattern piece. I will sew it on the three sides and leave this open and turn it through there. It will be tricky to turn for sure because it's long and skinny. This is not the way the pattern designed it. Please know that. It is designed for a raw edge, so mine will be a little trickier. If you do it this way, you will have to make adjustments by adding in your seam allowance and being willing to take the time to turn it the right sides out. The first thing I'm going to work on is the credit card slots. I love making credit card slots. I don't know what it is. I just think they're always so pretty. I do them a little bit on the lazy side, but I'm going to try to so show you or at least tell you the proper techniques even if I don't do it in the video. We will have two of these. So it's this very long piece of fabric, like I said, cotton woven, not interfaced. I'm using the template. The template makes it so much easier. You do not need the template, but it helps. So what it does is let's turn this over and I already have my mark just to show you. So I'm going to show you how you make the credit card slots with the template. You don't need the template. You can use the pattern, of course. You can use a roller and measure. It's just this way. It's just a little bit easier, I feel like. And so I wanted to show it to you. I'm going to be careful not to show you any of the measurements, just out of respect for the pattern designer. But what you do is you will take this template and you will place it at the bottom of the credit card slots. And then you will just draw a line across the top right here. I'm using chalk so I can draw all the way across so that you can see it. If I were doing these just myself off camera, I wouldn't even do that. I would just pinch right here. But, but since I want you to see it, I'm using the chalk to show it up nicely. Now, if you look here, you can see there's notches in this template. What I can do now is I can put that notch right there on that chalk line I drew, and then I would come up here and just draw another line right here at the top. I'm gonna continue doing that. So what I'll do is on the next set, I won't put it at the notch. I will do the full length of this piece, draw a line. The next place, I will put it at the notch. You just alternate back and forth so you can do it that way with this template, you don't need 
the measurements, you don't have to measure or think. You just go from line to line to line all the way down till you get to the bottom. What she tells us to do then is kind of cool the way you do it. Each one of these lines, you're just going to pinch together and take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch. So let's go ahead and start pinching these together. I'm pinching them all wrong sides together at each line that I drew. When we're pinching, let's try to make sure that we keep those sides aligned just so everything is staying neat and we have a really good stitch on there. I'm running out of clips because I did not bring them in with me, so I'm gonna to switch to my metal clip. And the very last one. The reason I like the way she does it this way is because you don't get confused as to if you are going back and forth and like, oh, which way do I fold it? Right sides together, wrong sides together. So you can see, this is how we have it, all these clips. I'm gonna tell you that she has you now to top stitch each one of these. So you do one, two, three, four, five top stitches. Top stitching just makes it look better, makes it hold better, gives it a little bit more strength when you're putting credit card slots in and out. When you're putting credit cards in and out, I do not top stitch. I'm just lazy like that. Um, I find it just adds extra time and sometimes my top stitching doesn't even look well, so I don't do that. But just imagine that I did top stitch and that all of these were top stitched and everything looked real good. If you're Prince Directional, you're gonna start from the top. After you top stitch them though, the pattern tells you how far down to measure from the top. You make that measurement and then you'll start pulling, let's go ahead and separate all these, you'll start pulling those credit card slots up to that measurement. No, I'm not going to have the measurement on the camera or the ruler because integrity to the pattern designer and all that. After you get this first one in place, the pattern tells you how far down from this fold that second one's going to go. So you'll just take it and pull it up to that measurement. You'll keep doing that, repeatedly pulling it up each one. When you have everything all aligned in the right order, in the right shape, you'll know you're you'll know you're there. And this is just me rough putting it together, so mine's not perfect. But your side accent piece, like if your credit card slots were really a lot shorter than your side accent piece, you know you need to go back over and look at your measurements again. After I have everything folded the way I want. Then I'll take it over to the iron and get it pressed flat. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to go over to the ironing board. I'm going to get out my ruler, make all my measurements, and get both of these done. So when I come back, I won't have sewn anything, but I'll just have everything ironed and pressed flat. I took my credit card slots over to the iron. I made sure I had a ruler with me so I can measure everything out again, make sure it measured fine. I pressed everything flat. You can see I did not top stitch any of these. If you don't like that, top stitch, that's fine. The pattern does tell you to. It's just I'm kind of lazy at times and I don't do it. The pattern also tells us the measurement we should cut these down to. We will have extra at the bottom. What I do is I just kind of make these kind of quick. I know that this piece is the exact measurement that the designer wants this to be in the end. So I can go ahead and take this, lay it down right sides together on the outside of the credit card slots go ahead and sew this on i don't need to measure because then i know that this overhang is going to be taken off it's just a little step i don't have to worry about the first time you sew a pattern and if you don't know those measurements and things yeah of course you have to measure make for sure but since this is not my first time i can go ahead and do that and say that extra step of measuring we will put these right sides together on both of the credit card slots on the outside. After I sew with the seam allowance key on the pattern, I will back stitch at the top and the bottom, but after I sew, then I will trim off that extra there. I went ahead and sewed down the first one and I just wanna show you that you're just gonna open this up. 
You can take it to the iron if you need to and press it flat. You can see there's already a lot of bulk here. Can you imagine how much thicker it would be if I would have interfaced all of these credit card slots before I folded them? They would just been too much. So I definitely don't, um, I definitely suggest you do not interface. The pattern doesn't ask you to interface either. But what you do now is you just open this up, iron it flat if you need to, but you're gonna top stitch along the accent piece not on the credit card slots. If you would sew there, you'd be risking getting these too small and your card might not fit. So just pull it flat or take it to the ironing board and just top stitch down that accent piece just an eighth of an inch away from that edge you just sewed or the folded edge, I guess you could call it. This is how this looks. Let's go ahead and trim along the bottom there. And now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and repeat those same steps on this second one and get it prepped and ready to go also. So now I have the accent pieces sewn on the both of these and I have them trimmed up on the bottom. I'm gonna take those card slot backing pieces and just so you know, yours would not have a seam, mine did because I ran out of material. But what I'll do is I'm going to just place it right sides together matching up that other edge. We are gonna sew with that same seam allowance given in the pattern on both of these to get these pieces attached. Let me just clip them in place. Since we have everything trimmed up, it should all fit perfectly. If you're not having these fit perfectly, just go back and check your measurements, make sure everything's okay. So now that I got this piece sewn on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the two, flip this all the way around, and then match up these raw edges. I'm gonna put a few clips in place, and that way I can top stitch this having it the right way. If you need to flatten this out, if you need to take it over the iron, you can. I'm gonna make sure my clips are all laying the flat way so I can sew easily. So this is what it looks like. I'm not too worried about ironing it out because what I'll do is when I sew, I'll just make sure I flatten everything out. You could do one row of stitches too. I'm gonna to do two. I just like the way it looks, but you definitely don't have to. It's more cosmetic. It's not like it's gonna serve any purpose if you only do one row of top stitching or two. But I want to sew down the edge closest to the credit card slots. Then I also wanna sew along the other edge, just a personal preference. This is how mine looks so far. Everything's looking great. I'm gonna go ahead and do those same steps on the other side and have both of the credit card slots then ready to be attached to my lining. Now I have both of the credit card slots done. I'm gonna pull out this lining piece and you know what we're gonna do. We're just going to have these, the raw edges against the raw edges of the lining. We're gonna clip everything up. Of course, our edges are not curved yet. We wanna leave these open to be slip pockets, but we'll base all around the perimeter of the lining piece and get everything attached. And then we can trim up those curves and make those corners nice and rounded, just like the lining is. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna baste around all of this. It's gonna be about an eighth of an inch, and that's our lining, it's done. And just like that, the lining is done. We have the credit card slots. We have two slip pockets. That is why as soon as I tested this pattern, I only made one of these and I immediately bought the templates. I usually don't do that. But whenever I saw how quick and easy this comes together, how it's not a lot of bulk and it just looks really nice, I knew these would be great, not only for gifts, but to sell at my craft shows. Having the templates will let me like really just get a bunch of them lined up and I think they'll do good for my shows. So I love the pattern so much. So now that we have the lining complete, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the exterior portion of this wallet. So now that I have my zipper finished, I went ahead and laid everything out kinda of in the order it's gonna go. That just kinda of helps me a little bit. So this is the way it's gonna look in the end. Before we sew that, I wanna talk about my snap tab a little bit. 
If you remember, I did mine differently. The pattern calls for a raw edge. I was unable to keep that beautiful point. Let me show it to you with my template. This is how the snap tab looks. You can see it's got that really good point. Well, because mine was kind of small, it wasn't turning out perfectly with my corners. Just not a good job for me. I should have done a little bit better. So you can see I chose to round mine because the points were not looking good. I didn't have them even and I didn't like the way it looked. It would have been way worse if I would have left it like that. So I decided to round mine. I do think now after having someone together that the raw edge looks better because you get that really nice shape. So personally, when I do it again, I will probably just do a raw edge snap tab, even if I want to use cotton woven everywhere else, because I felt like it was really hard to try to get that really nice point. Just wanted to give that information out. I will go ahead and top stitch all around this, though. I am going to go ahead and use it since I already have it cut out and ready to go. I'm not going to waste it. So I'm going to top stitch this. I am also going to go ahead and start working on that zipper pocket. So this is the way it's going to work in the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and flip this part down. Make sure you match up the centers and add a few clips here. When you have that centered and clipped into place, you're going to pull out one of your pocket lining pieces and you're going to go ahead and lay it right sides together with that bottom piece. So that is how we're attaching this zipper to the bottom piece. If you chose to not use the pattern pieces and just use the measurements, your edges may not be curved yet. That's how I did my first one. I just did the curves later. I did not use the pattern pieces, but since I have the templates now, I do use them and mine are curved. But if yours is not curved yet, don't, don't worry. You can get to that step later. So now that I have this all clipped together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew with the seam allowance in the pattern. I will have to move that zipper pull out of the way whenever I get to it, but I'm going to sew from one end to the other, and then I'm going to flip the two pieces wrong sides together and go ahead and top stitch them just like you typically would. So I got my snap tab top stitched and I have the pocket ready to go. I will trim down my tabs in just a little bit but as you can see now it's time to attach the middle piece to this zipper so I'm just going to flip it down. Add some clips there making sure that I'm lining up these edges once again and then I'm going to come back and add that lining piece just like I did the first time. lining piece right sides together with the other lining piece and with the exterior. It is only wrong sides with the zipper tape. Okay. So let's go ahead and sew along that edge and then do the same top stitching here as well. This is what you have at this point. So this is how it looks from the front. This is how it looks from the back. What we're going to do is we're going to flip up this middle piece only. We're leaving that lining down. So we're just going to flip this up and top stitch. We're going to be kind of pulling them apart so it's a nice straight top stitch. But just remember that lining pocket stays down. You do not flip it up. So this is what we have so far. I'm going to go ahead and trim up those zipper tabs just to get them out of the way. Now at this point the pattern tells us to do something a little unique. I like this and it's a just a little extra step that I think does have a good benefit in a pattern. So she tells us to make a measurement from each edge. So I'm going to make that measurement off camera and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. So here's my marks. What I want to do is I want to trim away the lining only, not the zipper. So we're going to leave that zipper alone. We're not going to touch it, but we're going to trim away. So you can see here is my zipper with the seam allowance. I'm just going to come in and cut and trim away this extra. 
This is just going to get a little more of that bulk out. Of, and I'm going to go ahead and trim off this bottom part. Let me go ahead and get that trimmed out of the way too along this bottom so it's all nice and straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim up. And if you wanted, you can draw the line all the way down so you would know exactly what to cut on. I feel pretty comfortable that I can eyeball it. And go ahead and get that out of the way. So now that I've got everything trimmed up, I'm going to sew down these sides. I don't really have to worry about this part so much because when I sew it in the final steps, that's going to get caught in the seam allowance. I'm going to leave this bottom part open. That's how I'm going to be turning the wallet. But since I'm turning through this bottom part, I want to make for sure that this lining is not my seam allowance. If it was in the seam allowance, it would definitely get caught and then I couldn't turn the wallet. So just note your seam allowance and make sure you have clearance there. But what I'm going to do is just sew down these side portions right here to get the wallet prepped for the next steps. For me, what I'm doing is I'm just flipping this part, the bottom part up so that I can just see clearly what I'm doing. I'm going to come right up to that cutout and have my needle starting right at that cutout, keeping the seam allowance back stitching when I start and stop. So this is what we have at this point. We're gonna bring these pieces on over and let's just go ahead and finish attaching the same way, putting that accent piece right sides together and let's sew it with the seam allowance. I'm going to flip this piece up, just my accent piece, and I'm going to keep the seam allowance under this accent piece and I'm going to top stitch on it. So top stitching on this accent piece will allow me to catch that seam allowance and have it going up. So let's go ahead and top stitch there. I'm going to take this other top piece and do the same thing. Place it right sides together and sew with that seam allowance given in the pattern. Definitely make sure you're making a good effort to keep everything in line on the sides as well. At this point, I want to sew again on that accent piece. So this one, I'm going to have to push that seam under so I will flip the seam down so I can still sew on that accent piece and catch the seam. So my seam is going down now. At this point, we have our exterior done, we have our lining done, we have our snap tab. It's time to just put everything together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make sure I get the marks on my snap tab and on my exterior for the snaps. I'm gonna go ahead and get those installed. I'm not for sure if I'm doing a cam snap or if I'm doing a magnetic snap. I will look and see what I have and decide on that. So I'm gonna place the marks for those and then decide on it and come back and then we'll get through the next step of just putting everything all together. Such a quick and fun pattern. If you have been nervous about sewing wallets, just try this one. I really feel like this is a great beginner friendly wallet to try. I decided to go ahead and use cam snaps on my wallet, mainly for money. Um, I'm kind of low on my riveted magnetic snaps, but I have all kinds of cam snaps. I feel like it will work fine in this application. If I feel like it gives me problems, I'll let you guys know in a post, but I'm going to try it this way. You could also use a magnetic snap however you want to do it. The way you figure out your placement is so cool on this. I love patterns that are kind of intuitive. You do not have to measure, you do not have to do anything like that. You simply fold this in half, find the center on that accent piece, and that's where you install it. I love that, so good, so good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put my snap, oh, and I placed the other side of the snap on this tab here. I'm just going to clip it in place or snap it in place, I should say. 
Now that I have that snapped in place, I'm going to clip it just so it's kind of staying there. And I'm going to just make sure I know where it's going to go. I'm going to flip it back here. And so it's actually going to go on this other side. I just like to do it this way to kind of get my marks correctly made. Because it will be sewn on this other side and this is how it will come over. So let's get that all figured out. Let's unsnap. Turn it over. Open that back up. The pattern tells you how much overhang you want to have on this piece. I'm going to clip it in place, but then I'm going to kind of check and make for sure I have it snapped in the right place because I would hate to have all this work done and it not work out properly. So this is where I think it will go. Let me test it out and make sure I have it the right way though. That looks perfectly even to me. Okay, I'm going to make for sure that I have the right amount of snap tab hanging off the edge. I do, and I'm just going to base that in place so you can see they're on opposite sides. The pattern wants us to leave a pretty good amount of this overhang here, so I will. I might trim it a little bit, but I will leave a good portion of it even after I sew it. So now what we need to do is we need to put everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place these right sides together and I'm going to kind of center this lining on here. Mine is just barely, barely off, really hardly at all. So I'm okay, maybe just like an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to go around and have it even on all sides. If you haven't rounded your corners, like I said, go ahead and do that. Put your clips in all around. See, like this edge is a little bit higher than this one. And I'm just going to shift a little so they're evenly. So this is what we have. Now at this point, we are going to sew all around. And I'm going to sew from this side because I want to make sure I do not get this lining pocket caught in my seam allowance. But I'm going to sew all the way around. Then I'm going to trim up the corners with my pinking shears. We will turn through that zipper pocket, top stitch, and then we're done. If you feel at this point that you need some more structure, if you're like, hey, I want it a little more sturdy, a little stronger, this is when you insert the extra interfacing. You could add whatever you wanted. You could add fleece. You could add Decaville light. You could add Peltex. You could add Decaville heavy. It's whatever you want. I did not add anything in my last one. I'm not going to add anything in this one. I am someone who doesn't really like a lot of structure and things. This is soft. If that bothers you, if you like it really firm, you would definitely want to add something at this point. You could even wait if you wanted to add after you sewed it all together. You could use this pocket. You could even wait to add the interfacing if you wanted to until after you all sold it after you sewed everything all together and turned through this pocket and then you could just insert the interfacing through this pocket. That's an option too. It's whichever way you want to do. It's not going to hurt the wallet any either way. If you insert it through the pocket after you've turned it, you would just need to make sure you took the time to get it in the corners and the curves and have it all smoothed out. So, so many options. I, that's why I love it. It's just very common sense. It's very easy to make it the style you want and the feel you want. Can't, can't say enough about how much I love this wallet. It's probably my favorite wallet right now because I feel like anybody can sew it. I feel like you don't need any special tools. You can have cotton woven. I love using cotton woven. I'm not a big fan of using vinyl. Most people know that by now, but this one's just great. So here I am sewing over that zipper. You can see I'm having this pocket, this extra bolt, completely out of the seam allowance. It is just perfect to reduce bulk, so we won't have any like yucky corners when we're top stitching. Everything will be smoothed out nicely. I went around the curves with my pinking shears, and I did just trim a little bit off that tab. It is time to turn everything out. 
and then we can press it if we need to and top stitch. Okay, here is what we got. I am going to, oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> it's so good. Even before pressing, even before top stitching, everything looks great. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to first get out my pocket, close this up, then I'm going to iron everything flat, and then I'm gonna top stitch all around here. So let's just pull out that pocket, get everything straight, and let's go ahead and sew. I just sew about an eighth of an inch away, really just to close the pocket. That's all you're doing. Tuck that pocket back in there. Once you have that finished, make sure you smooth it all out. We wanna get it nice and flat there. I'm going to go over to the iron and flatten everything out, press it and trim up all my threads and then I'll come back to top stitch. So I have my wallet all pressed flat. Everything looks great. It is beautiful. I cannot wait to top stitch it and start using it. I am making a Tuesday tote to match this. I don't have it done yet, but you will see pictures on Facebook if you follow me on Instagram or if you're in my Facebook group so country you will see pictures there but I'm going to go ahead and top stitch around just gonna do eighth of an inch away I'm making sure that my bobbin and my top thread both match the bag the way I want it to I'm making sure that I have matching bobbin so that it looks good on the bottom on the lining side of this wallet I'm gonna go really slow I'm just doing eighth of an inch away but thankfully, the way this wallet is designed, I'm not going to have any like big bulky parts or anything like that. So it's just going to be a really great sew and it's looking like beautiful in the end. And it is done. I have the credit card slots. I have the slip pockets. I have a zipper pocket. This wallet is so good, so quick, so fun. It's just a great sew. I really like it. I have no complaints with this wallet pattern. It's just wonderful. You can see mine has great shape. I mean, it's not like flopping completely over. If you wanted yours to be a little sturdier, you could definitely add more interfacing than I did. If you're like me and you just want a kind of a simple sew, Keep it light, don't add too much of anything. It just is always gonna look great no matter what. I think it's a wonderful wallet. I'm going to, like I said, make a matching bag. I got a thread right there, let me pull that out. This pattern is from Stitches by Christy. My fabrics are all from Jane R. Edwards. They are a mix of cotton canvas and some cotton woven. My templates are from Sweetly Unique. I've already ordered another set of templates and She's quick. It's not like a very long turnaround, which I really appreciate. Thank you guys for watching another tutorial of mine. And I hope today that in your sewing room, you take the time to sew up a wallet, whether it's this pattern or a favorite pattern that you have. Just sew something practical. And a wallet is definitely something we all can use and need. And it's a great gift too. Thank you so much for watching and you have a great day.